I just I just sharded. Chris has an upset stomach. I, we don't know why. Yeah, I was up all night doing the duty. So. I'm okay. So. But why? That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> The caravan's here, they came in yesterday, and we are all set to go. Had a really awesome dinner together, and they're leaving, so we've got to leave too. Yep. Mm -hmm. We are going to be passing out toys and gifts for the kids, and I have some goodies for any of the mothers I see standing around, like little bath supplies. And uh, that's what we're going to be doing today. We've got Santa Claus, we've got our Christmas hats on, and we're gonna go have some fun with the kids. Bye, we are in a little town called Esquilita. It means little school. This is our first stop. It's right outside the San Ignacio Laguna, and we're gonna come over here and pass out some toys. There's a little school here, I believe, or preschool for kids. <laughs> a bag of goodies. What you got in there? Uh, no. Soaps, like bath stuff. Yeah. Oh, how cute! Oh, that's these. cute. Look at that. <laughs> All right, there you are. They all oh, have those little, little Yeah. Little. Oh, Oh my god. I gotta have a, I gotta have a photo of this one. <laughs> oh my god. She's so cute. She's so excited. <laughs> oh, let's see what we got here with this baby. <laughs> oh, I like this one right here. Yeah, yeah, it's a Where's the candy for the kid? I got it. I bet. <laughs> So far we visited two schools just outside of uh, the Laguna de San Ignacio and um, and it's it's tough. These kids are so happy and they have so little and I'm preaching to the choir for anybody who's ever traveled to a poor place, um, Mexico, Honduras, anywhere in Africa or Asia. But man, it is, um, it's heartwarming to see the kids smile and you just look around the school, which is just one building, one room, um, the simplicity of it and there were five kids in the second school and about 20 kids or so in the first school kids showed up that weren't even in school they heard santa was in town so they showed up and um i mean looking at where they live it's um this is special for them but looking at it there's joy everywhere we go which is cool um i mean we know the less you have the less things to worry about and maybe these these kids just have it down pat and because they they were getting excited about just a little um, a little toy or a little stuffed animal and a smile on some of their faces has been awesome so we're headed to our third school and then we're headed off for a little bit of a drive today and um, I'm honestly I have no idea what's going on or what comes next I've been battling the sickness don't know if it's the flu don't know if I drank some bad water I don't know what I'm struggling with, but I'm struggling. Um, and just seeing these kids has been a bright part of the day. Ooh. 
down. We are on our way to a little town called El El Gadito. Uh, it's on the way to um, San Juanico, <laughs> and we are on one bumpy road. There's going to be some point where we're going to have to get through sand, so we're going to have to we'll drive it. I'd rather do that now. And we are getting left behind. Which means the people behind us will be left behind. But I think there's only one road. I don't think we can get lost. So. I can't break down. Next town, I think, is about an hour and a half away. We're gonna uh, do a little more there, I think, with kids as well. And stop and have lunch. We learned earlier yesterday that the road through the salt flats uh, was a little too wet and soft. So we have to take what they call the sand road. You need four by four because the sand is soft and I guess it's not as soft as the salt flat road because, I don't know, this seems pretty soft. But we haven't gotten stuck, got our four by four on. The other people in our caravan I believe also have four by four. Wow, uh, holes buggered up time. Yeah, but this is rough. stop which is like rule number one through seven when in four-wheel drive don't slow down and then we had to climb up a hill to go around him and kind of slid toward him he was worried about me I wasn't worried about him he wasn't moving our mirrors were pretty close though. yeah he was watching the mirror the whole time I probably should have pulled it in but our, I think our mirror went over his mirror <laughs> We've come to a point in the road where we are staggering our drive across this like spit of dirt. <laughs> and I'm not sure exactly why, except that it's probably a pretty rough road. So we just gotta keep moving and give each other. Yeah, we gotta keep moving and give each other enough room to I guess go. Not stop. Not stop. So uh, looks like Steve made it across pretty good. I think we'll crazy. I'm sick, but I don't even have time to think about being sick because I'm looking at the road and the road's going from washboard to sand to mud to maybe a little bit smooth and then big off. pebbly stones to rock to, yeah, it, it's been crazy. Um, so we dedicated our truck to God. We gave it back to God in spring when we were told that the truck was dead. God brought it back to life. So this is God's truck. And he told us to come out here, so when it breaks, I'm going to send God the bill, and I know he'll take care of it. <laughs> that sounds sacrilegious. It's not. This is just a truck. I mean, it's our home. It's everything we have. But um, we were definitely called to come on this trip, and not entirely sure exactly why, how, all that stuff. We might be 10 years down the road, we look back, and we're like, wow, that's why we went. Yeah. But right now, it feels like hell. It feels like misery because we are driving places we said we would never drive again. Not that we want to be overly cautious and not experience the world, 
But I mean, uh, man, a breakdown out here, Lindsay just pointed it out, like there's no tow trucks. We'd be stuck in this town for God knows how long. And God really would know how long because nobody else would. It would be a lot longer than manana, I can tell you that. But we're, uh, we're with pretty good people on this caravan and so we're just trusting that they're making it through, we're gonna make it through if we got stuck or broke down, somebody to help us out in some way and we'd figure it out. But I promise you, I promise you, I never, ever, ever imagined this place even existed. We're out in the middle of nowhere, nowhere, and we're about to pull into this community with at least 50 children. So that tells you how many adults are gonna be around. And it's, I mean, it's literally in the middle of nowhere, right on the Pacific. So, <sighs> take a deep breath. We've been in four wheel drive for the last, I don't know, 20 miles. As it's gone from mud to sand to mud to sand to mud to sand. So we're really putting Rocket through it right now. This is what she was made for and she's doing great. Right, Rocket? How do you guys feel? Abby's not liking it. I think my hand's gonna be sore from gripping the, the door handle. Oh crap, handle. Mm -hmm. Everest at one point buried her head into Lindsay's armpit. <laughs> she was over it. So That was early on. Yeah. Uh. This is a full day of driving out here. We've made two stops, but those were closer to Antonio's. And now we're out in the middle of nowhere. And then we're gonna go back through the middle of nowhere to get to the next part of the middle of nowhere. And then from there, we're gonna go stay somewhere where there's supposedly a bunch of surfers. Is that called San Juanica? San Juanica. San Juanica. And there's a paved road. So by the end of the night, we should be back on pavement. For the rest of this trip. For the rest of this trip. Um, but, whew. All right, that was a long spiel about me being a little pansy when it comes to being off-road. But um, this is this is our, our life. <laughs> can't handle, oh man, can't handle the thought of a breakdown. Anyway, I'm not gonna think about it. Now, because everybody stopped for a couple minutes, I'm gonna think about the diarrhea in my stomach. Chris, quit telling them that. I haven't thought about it for the last two hours because I've been my butthole's been puckered up so tight, <laughs> nothing was squeaking out. <laughs> TMI. Yes. Yeah, Maybe TMI. I'll edit that out. Maybe I'll end the video with it. So this fishing village has about 50 people in it, counting kids, probably a couple more and they've all come out. It's not like when we were in those other towns where it was just the school kids. This is like the whole town, the whole village. Delgatigato, delgatigato. No, I don't know, because now you've got me all mixed up. Delgatito? Delgatito was a pretty awesome experience. I was blown away by the kindness of the people there. Um, the, our little notes say about 50 people, but it was probably a little bit more than that. Yeah, pretty much the whole, the whole town came out when we showed up and they were all so nice, so grateful uh, for everything that we handed out. They didn't fight for anything. We had tons of clothes and food that we were handing out. And as we're holding up, you know, a men's shirt, the guys were all standing around and one of them would say, yeah, yeah, me. And another would say, yeah, yeah, me. And they'd look at each other and... You know, get, figure, out who, needed, figure out who needed it more. Yeah. It was really, really cool to see. Um, so the kindness of the, those people, and they were definitely grateful that we came through there. So it was a really cool experience. Yeah, for sure. And now we're at... El Datil? El Datil. The date. The date. The date. And we're going to go see what's going on at the date. And my it, stomach is still bothering me. Yeah. It looks like it's a bigger town than uh, Del Gatito. So, but still pretty poor. Uh, definitely a fishing town on the Pacific Coast still. And um, it looks like quite a few more people here. They've got power lines, yeah. which so we haven't have, seen. Yeah, the other town had no power. Yeah, they did not have solar. power. They had solar panels. This town's they got a little bit more here. Daddle was definitely not the kind of place as the last three, I guess, from the beginning. They're very aggressive people 
who just wanted, wanted, wanted. And again, I get it. We're coming in with gifts and whatnot. Yeah. But my goodness, there was zero thank yous from what I could tell. I there got were a few, but people grabbing, grabbing. We had kids grabbing. almost mug us at our truck, poking their head into our truck when we're trying to get in, saying regalos, regalos, gifts, gifts, gifts. Like I already told them no. I said we don't have any, and they're still oh, man. It's sad. I mean, it is sad. I, I, I totally, my heart goes out to the people in this town. However, the big, big difference between here and Delgaditos is the kindness in those people's yeah. hearts back there. I love that town, that village. So, yeah. I think we're headed out and gonna find camp. We're two hours from sunset and we're in the middle of nowhere. San Juanica, I guess, is about two hours out. Hopefully less. I'm not driving this at night. <laughs> and, uh, we're back on the dirt road, of course. If you haven't figured out, all of these villages that we've stopped at aren't hardly on a map anywhere. And we've had to really search for them um, just to where we were and see, wow, we're on the Pacific Ocean way down here in between nowhere and nowhere. And it's crazy that people live out here. Heavy. Come on. Get back. So I was just... Well, I can't. There's a dog butt in the way. I was just taking uh, four-wheel drive off. have to manually lock and unlock the hubs. And uh, as I was doing that, Roy comes walking up and I said, Are we done with the four-wheel drive? Just kind of joking around, assuming we're done with the four-wheel drive. He goes, Well, actually, the fun's coming up. we got to cross the river. Oh! Let's see how this goes.
finally made it to San Juanico. It is supposedly one of the best surf spots in Baja, but we are not here to surf. And I never thought that we'd ever make it here, but here we are. And uh, this is where we're gonna call it a night. We are exhausted. Chris especially is exhausted because he was up all night. He barely got any sleep last night because he was sick. And we've had a long day, a long bumpy road of driving. We are tired and we are gonna go find a spot on the beach where we can spend the night. And we'll show it to you when we get there. That was about the best sound that you have made. <laughs> it's paved. It is paved. And then we're going into the sand. Yep. Four wheel drives on. One last little hurrah. Going to our beach spot. On the beach. Oh, look at all the other, oh, there's all the uh, fishing boats. No waves, it is flat. We are all set up for the night on our awesome camp spot on the beach in Scorpion Bay. Chris is already up in bed. He's exhausted. I'm going to heat me up some dinner and then I'm going to call it a night as well. And we will see you manana manana. Heat me up. Huh? Heat me up some. Heat me up something to eat. Heat me up. Huh? Heat me up some. Heat me up something to eat. Heat me up. Huh? Heat me up some. Heat me up something to eat. Heat me up.